Yeah, I mean, it's funny because because I have been um, out walking a few times, you know, with friends or whatever, and I've had people actually saying to me, are you Fiona Lark? And it, it has completely floored me when somebody stopped me and said that. What was some of the best advice that you were given when you first started making photographs? I think somebody said something about don't do any interviews with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to be huge on YouTube, I think, um, because of all those reasons. Oh, thank you, Fiona. I think, I think you're going to be absolutely huge. And I think, um, I think the world is your oyster because, because of all the things that you've just said. And it, and it, it is just, um, it's so apparent and, you know, you can, you, and, and new people are coming to watch your videos and I hope, you know, it helps a little bit, you know, like if I put a story on or something like that, even if you just get another couple of views, you know, that, that, that is good. People, people need to see you, you know, it's, um, you're, you're different from anybody and you're doing something different to what anybody else is doing, you know, all these people that are trying to interview me and I've said, I haven't got time at the moment, but I've said, you know, I, I, I've gone and I've been interviewed by you and because I completely trust you and I love what you do. Um, and I've got to really trust the person, whereas, but for now, it's just nice. And I've enjoyed the interviews with you and I enjoyed the interview with Sean. And for now, that's, that's enough for me. <laughs> mm. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Picture. Today, we have a very, very special episode. It's a conversation. It's a photographer that I am enamored with. I'm mesmerized by Fiona Lark. Her self-portraits are photographs that will stop you dead in your tracks. If you've never seen the work of Fiona Lark, you've chosen the right video. Not only are you going to see incredible photography, but you're going to hear words from Fiona. You're going to learn about her approach to photography. You're going to learn about how modest, how humble, how sweet she is as a person and all of that is coming to you right now hope you guys enjoy i know many people may have not seen our first interview so for the people who haven't seen our first interview can we talk about a little bit how photography found you or how you found photography yeah i mean it's um it's a good question um I mean, I started at a really young age. It was um, mum and dad had a little Kodak brownie. And um, so I, I would I would kind of pinch that off them and be clicking away. And then, um, like and then I think, I, yeah, it was it was it was just like that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Continue. I was always really creative as well. Um, so I was always making things out of um, sellotape and, you know, and sticking, sticking things together and drawing and, and making things. I was never, um, when I was at school, I, because I went to so many different schools, um, my parents moved around a lot when I was younger. So academically, I wasn't that great, but um, but I was always really creative, and I can always remember just um, being happy if I had a pen and um, some sellotape, and um, so yeah, and so so then when I was ten, I got um, the, um, the the Kodak Instamatic, and that was just absolute. I, I just thought it was magic. It was you know press <laughs> pressing the button and then. In the photo actually appearing right in front. So that was just, that was just magic. So that, I think that just really got me hooked. And then, you know, I went through my teens and all that. And so yeah, do you like my mug? I know, it's lovely. It's lovely. What a, what a clever idea. <laughs> it matches your top. It's exactly, it's exactly. It's almost like it's from the same collection. <laughs> almost. <laughs> it's really uncanny. I hope, um, I hope that stuff that I sent you um, 
has helped you in your photography life the jacket the i don't know i just i'm glad everything was perfect well you saw the pictures of the jacket yeah it was just um it was absolutely perfect and the hoodie it was makes me happy i'm I'm so glad when did you realize that you had talent like for something regarding art photography are there other areas of art that you are influenced by music when did you realize or are you still struggling with your talent I, for I, photography I, I don't i don't think i've really realized <laughs> um i think i'll i'll probably maybe realize when i'm you know an old woman trying to walk up the mountain with my Zimmer frame. <laughs> and, uh, oh my God, your cane and your walker. Yeah. My word. And then I'll, 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 I'll look back. But, um, but no, I mean, I think, um, I mean, it blows me away. It, I, you know, I, ca- I can't get my head around, you know, like you want to interview me and other people want to interview me and, you know, and an Instagram, you know, the, the, my photos do tend to do well on Instagram and it and it completely it just blows me away because I I um you know I look at them and I know I'm, I mean I know they're all right but um but I, I, I always I mean I'm doing I, I feel like at the moment I'm doing I am doing the best that I can possibly do at the moment but I know that um you know I I I'm I'm going to push myself, um, especially this year, and I, I just feel like um, I just feel like I I, I am going to get better, but um, but I think um, you know like the fetching the horses into my pictures and things like that, um, you know I think that's kind of added um, a little bit more interest to them, um, but um, but yeah, I feel like your I photography can't remember, has. I can't remember, I feel I, the question was just when did you realize that um, you really had uh, talent for it? Uh, the answer is I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've said how humble you are. I've said how shy and understated you are before. And for the people who are watching this right now, they can obviously you can see um, yeah. how humble yeah. Fiona is. I I have to say the work that you do with wild horses is absolutely, absolutely like earth shattering. I'm so sorry about your horses. I do know that you lost a couple recently, which must be incredibly difficult, but the connection that you have with animals, the connection that you have with wildlife, with your environment, the area that you live, it seems like you're very connected, Fiona. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, especially with these, um, the wild horses, I mean, obviously they weren't my wild horses, um, but because um, because I've been around them for so long, I, I do feel like um, I'd kind of got a bit, a, a bond with them so it's um so yeah that was um that was pretty heartbreaking when I found out that um a couple had died but um I can remember somebody sent me a message and um just said you know do you sell your prints and I didn't have a website or anything like that I just quickly kind of had to come up with a price there you and, go um, say yeah, yeah I I sell them and um so yeah I got so I got this pr- this um, photo printed, and um, it, I don't think it was printed very well at all. Um, but um, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't actually that long. It was maybe six or seven years ago, so it mm-hmm. wasn't that long ago. And um, yeah, so it it it, it um, I think, and it, it just I can't I can't remember which picture it was, um, but. That was that was the first one that I sold. I ha- I mean I haven't sold that many. Um, I, I think I think probably in the last six or seven years I might have sold about thirty. 
Um, so it's kind of not enough for me to leave my job. <laughs> Got Stuff you. Like um, but still the, the validation, and I think uh, the only reason that you've only sold 30 is because of people knowing you. I think that people knowing that you have prints for sale, for me, as someone who's a fan, I know your work. The only way that I found that you had prints for sale was by going to your website and seeing. So maybe there's a YouTube video or something like that that you make that yeah, helps yeah. people I mean, I think, know that yeah. because you do have such a great audience already um, on YouTube and you have such fans on YouTube. I think that that would be a great way for you to maybe let some of us know that you have some prints for sale. And, and how large do you yeah. make your prints? Well, yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I've just, um, I've actually um, just started um, selling through the print space. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've heard of the print space. But, it might be um, UK specific, but um, I have yeah. it. Yeah, so it's, um, it's just a really good company. So they kind of um, do everything. So, you know, somebody orders a print and, you know, orders the size, they print it, do a certificate of authentication. Because before, you know, it was, um, I mean, I do do limited editions, so I think it's um, 30 um, of each print. Um, so it's, um, so I mean, before, um, you know, somebody was ordering and then I was um, ordering the print from um, Glasgow, um, a really good print company in Glasgow, then they would send it down to me and then, you know, I, I would... They've, they've packed it up beautifully and then I've had to unpack it repack and it. then sign it and then pack it up again. It's kind of the stress of all that. But with the print space, they just do they do everything, which is um, which is brilliant. So I've just actually um, gone with them now. Um, so to be completely honest, I'm not sure what's I, I think there's two sizes. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to have a look, but um, they're quite big. Amazing. Amazing. I'm, I'm excited. And again, I, I'm wondering, do you have some of the work from the print space printed in your at your at your own home? Have you done example prints? Do they provide you with examples so you can see what the client will um, end up with? No, not yet. No, but, I've got, um, I've got a print here, though, in here of, um, I've, I've got one of my prints on the wall, just one just of one course. i would just love one. to i don't know if you can turn the camera but i would i could love. i could get it do you want me to go and get it i would love to see it fiona it would make me so happy oh my god let's go that's amazing that's great framing and that um the frame makes it like so beefy it makes it feel so substantial that that size is um i want to say that's 12 by 18 is what it looks like um what a beautiful um, print what a beautiful shot that looks fantastic thanks for sharing that so that was um yeah. i was gonna ask um yeah. that that was printed through a different space or through the same no, that was um, printed um, by a company in Glasgow. Um, so it said that the, as a, they, they were so good, but um, it was just the extra cost. Yeah. You don't really make that much profit by the time sure. um, you've paid for them to be, sure. for it to be printed. It's the profit is, isn't yeah. very much. At I all, understand so. you're doing a lot of work yeah. to make $20 and to allow someone to have yeah. your photograph yeah. on the wall. Like I understand. Yeah. I mean, it is, you are facilitating art and it is your work up, but it, it, there, it has to also be worth it <laughs> a yeah. little bit yeah. for sure. I do understand yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah. rolling from the prints, I saw now exhibits, Paris, London. Can we talk about your photographs being in frames on yeah. walls in well, galleries around the world? Well, just Paris. Um, but, um, but yeah, it was, um, I just got, um, it was just from Instagram. I just got a message, um, 
just asking me if I would like to exhibit um, one of my pictures in Paris. So um, I was just completely blown away and I was just like, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so this, um, it was part of, um, part of a woman's only exhibition um and um and it was just um so we went on a little road trip um a little group of us and um and it, it was just it was incredible it was incredible to see my picture hanging up in a gallery in paris and i was just completely blown away so it was um it was it was brilliant it was really good um so, how yeah, was it received yeah. yeah well it was um it was a bit odd because um, I don't know. I mean, I, I was kind of stood, and obviously nobody nobody knew that it was my picture. <laughs> so um, so people were like were walking around and looking, and um, and you know you could hear them chatting about it, and um, and yeah, it was um, it, and it was it was a bit odd listening to people talking about your picture when you like stood there and, and I, I met I met some really lovely people and it was um it was it was just all good fun it was good fun but Amazing. it completely completely blew my mind but that says that you need to have more Paris. pictures on walls in galleries around the world like <laughs> honestly well, yeah, I would love to I would love to I would absolutely love to. So, I think yeah. um, a solo show for you is something that is so necessary. The gallery world and how your work would be received within a gallery space, how that would help your sales, your print sales, and just yeah. validate you um, as, an, as an artist as well. I mean, I think for you being someone who is so shy, who's so understated, it it it's almost like you need these kinds of um accolades and attention in, in order to like encourage you to put more photos in frames on walls. Does that make sense? Cuz obviously yeah. the feeling, right? The feeling that you have when you see your work on the wall in a gallery it's it's incredible and also the company that you're in especially if it's a group show the other photographers that were selected and you being within that class it's a real it's a confidence boost yes yeah oh absolutely and i i think i i would love i would love to have an exhibition and i i have kind of thought about it i think um i, I mean i think i think at the end of the day i think you're not probably really going to make that much money for an from an exhibition not I think really it's been, i mean the, the the huge outlay that you've got to put you know buying all the prints and um and and you know having an open opening night and all mm -hmm. that and um and i think it would be absolutely fantastic and i think it's a good thing to say that you've had an exhibition um but i don't think you're gonna from a business point of view, I don't think I would make that much money. But yeah, it, there's it, there's ways it, to do it. I, th I mean, if you think of Sean Tucker and how he has a book to sell. So the first thing Fiona Lark does is have a book to sell. You have something that's less expensive than the price of entry of a, of a print, which could cost you, say, 500 pounds, right? But if you have a book that has a selection of your photographs that cost, say, 50 pounds, and you print a thousand of them, well, now, if you sell a hundred of those, it pays for the book, you know, pays for the ex exhibition. And it's something that ongoing that you can sell. I find that the shows that have prints to sell, that have a book, postcard, smaller things that you people can pick up that can't afford to buy the print. And also because you've never done it before, there's like a anticipation, like the most anticipated show of the year, Fiona Lark, her first solo show, like that kind of hype. <laughs> There's a movie called Exit Through the Gift Shop. And this movie, um, it's about Banksy, who's a very obviously famous street artist. Um, it's basically just about art and perception and the art world. And, how, and it really, I believe, teaches you how to value your own art and your own work. So I've learned a lot from 
watching art films. Jean-Michel Basquiat is another painter, artist who heavily influenced me. I realized once I started putting my work on the wall, the value of the work and the value as myself in my market as a photographer went up considerably. So, and having my photographs in books, like I, my photo of Pharrell is in the first book of Canadian contemporary photographers. Um, with photography, I mean, I've, I've got, I, I, I've, I've actually got my own business completely set. You know, it's not nothing to do with photography. I've got my own business and I work and with photography, I've always kind of said always, always, um, that I, I didn't, I, I never wanted it to be a business, you know, mm. I, because it, it, because I, I've always said it was my hobby, you know, and it was, it was kind of my therapy. And, um, but I mean, just speaking to people, um, you know, recently and, um, and it's just, well, but why, why not, you know, why not make money out, you know, out of um, something that you actually enjoy doing? And I don't know why I've had this block in my head, always thinking, you know, no, I can't make money out of photography because it's my, you know, it's my thing. It's my hobby. Mm. It's, you can't it's monetize completely it. different. Yeah. So it's, um, but what, but why, why not, you know? why not well you have an audience that's the thing like you're almost doing it backwards like you have the audience and the viewers and the fans and the people who are basically begging you for more photos and and that's when you're like hey maybe it'd be okay to make a little money from this it's really interesting fiona that you have an audience and you have you have a style you have a technical ability you, you you've created just and i don't want you to take this the wrong way take this in the most artful way you've created this mishmash of style with how you edit with your eye like you do things so unconventionally and it equals this look that is unimitatable so <laughs> like can we talk about just I'm just I'm just so messy I think I'm just so unorganized and and messy and 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 that that's just me <laughs> I think the style and I mean you're by no means messy I would say that that's just your your own whatever your and the style that you've created is again I feel like Fiona anytime I try to pour a compliment on you like you quickly open your umbrella and you're trying to like defer all compliments you have something that is so special and an approach that's so unique you know Picasso said every child is born an artist the problem lies in remaining an artist once one grows up and somehow you've managed to approach photography with almost like the innocence of a child and you've managed to along the way create a textured layered emotional web of photography that it's it's actually mesmerizing and it truly fiona and i want you to hear this your photography stops people in their tracks and to to be that gifted that talented and as humble <laughs> deflecting as you are it just makes you so likable and i believe in you and I believe in your photography and your craft so much. I just am always trying to nudge you, encourage you to, to go into areas that are a little scarier. And, um, and this, and honestly, I pulled you from the internet. I want you to think about this. I watched a video you were on, on screen 
talking to Sean Tucker. I saw your photography. I heard your story. And I said, I'm going to get this woman on my show. And it took me 11 months, but now we're friends. Now uh, we're taught. And this is directly because of how your work affected me, how your voice, your tone, the way you talked about your photography, it affected me in such a way that I had to grab you from the internet and have my own conversations for, with you. So your work affects people, Fiona, and it's incredibly special. And the way that you downplay your photography, it's, it's endearing, but I'm telling you, I'm worried about when you actually shine light on your photography and what's it going to be like when you really, really push because you have a, an artist approach and you don't put pressure on yourself. You're very easy on yourself as far as how you photograph and how you go about it. Um, I just like this delicate dance that you're doing. Um, that's all I want to talk about it. I wanted to compliment you on. Thank you. Thank you. And you're very I mean, welcome. Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, well, photography, it, photography, it's, it's helped me so much, um, you know, over the years, particularly um, maybe 10 years ago, um, it, it helped me, it just helped me so much and the creativity and all that helped me so much. And, and then I think if, if it helps, you know, if, if anybody look, if anybody looks at any of my pictures and kind of feels anything, you know, I mean, I get, I'll get messages from people saying that, you know, they've, they've seen my pictures and, and, you know, that they've written poetry or they've, um, you know, it's helped them um, through a time or whatever, you know. So, so anything like that, you know, if, if, if my pictures make any difference at all, you know, from somebody looking, you know, that, that, that's just absolutely incredible. And I think, um, you know, like when, when I'm up on the mountains with, on the fells with the camera and, um, you know, so, I've got my jacket off, it's freezing cold and, and it's, um, it's, it's, it's feeling alive, you know, so I, I feel like I'm actually alive, you know, living and it's, um, and it's that absolute raw emotion um, that I don't get from anything else apart from being up on fells, I've got to be completely on my own as well. And just, um, so if any of that, comes through in my pictures you know that's well that's absolutely inc inc it's amazing and i think um when when i when i think back to um when i was going through really difficult times and so i, I would be up on the fells with my camera just on my own taking pictures and um you know i was going through difficult times so that the, the real emotion was actually there and um and i was talking to a friend about it um so i've i've taken kind of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures um but i don't feel like the emotions really been there so i haven't posted these pictures because for me you know the emotion wasn't there so i haven't got that emotional connection to the pictures so i haven't posted it and he was saying you know he wonders if you know somebody else was to look at the pictures you know they would probably say well it's you know it's technically it's really good but but because for me it has no meaning mm. so i'm not going to post pictures that have no meaning so that's possibly why you know i, I i'm not posting quite as much on instagram and I've kind of stepped away as well. In in the past, I felt real big pressure to post on Instagram. Mm, of course. You know, because, you know, you've got to keep up. You know, people stop following you if you don't post kind of every 
every other day. But um, but recently I've just kind of taken a step back and thought, well, no, you know, I'm just going to post pictures when I'm ready to do so. And um, let go of the yeah. pressure. So, yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense. You know, I'm probably just waffling, talking. No, you're totally fine. Oh, stop, but, it. Um... <laughs> stop it. <laughs> stop it you're the it, honestly i love having these talks with you fiona i know our time zones are different but um you're always just right from the heart you know which i love which i love what's inspiring you these days photography wise or art wise or life wise what's inspiring um that's a good question are, are you inspired? Are you are you finding it? I, mean, I know I for, think... it's hard for me during this time of the year um, when there's the least amount of light, when it's the, the least amount of sun. I find it hard. Um, what about you? See, see it's, it's, it's my favorite time of year because <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's dark. It's dark and it's... It is. And it's really dismal and it's really depressing. And it's just like, yes. It looks you know, amazing for go, photography. I'm going to go and take some pictures. Whereas the summer, you know, it's just like, oh my God, you know, it's too sunny and it's too bright. And it's just, but this is, this is like, I mean, living in the Lake District, you, you come, you're surrounded by beauty just everywhere. I mean, I could just throw my camera up in the air. And it would take a great picture, you know, in any direction it pointed in, it would take a fantastic picture. So I'm so lucky. But um, so no, this, I mean, this time of year is just perfect for me. You know, it's just, um, it's, it's, um, it's just my perfect weather. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So is there new work that you've made that you haven't shared with anybody? Is there? Yeah. Yeah, do you know, I've got, um, like I said, I've taken so many, I went um, on a little holiday up to the Highlands of Scotland. Wow. And um, I, I've got a funny little story. Um, I was, we were driving up and um, we kind of, we, we were getting higher and higher. Um, and um, we were just driving along um, and the scenery was absolutely fantastic. It was just beautiful. And it's about a three, four hour drive up to the Highlands of Scotland from the Lake District. So we were just driving along and um, the side of the road, it's, I think it said, welcome to Glencoe or something like that. On the side of the road, this big sign and next to the big sign, there was a stag. These absolutely huge, huge antlers, this huge stag. And, um, and we drove past it and, um, and I said, oh, my God, there's a stag, you know, on the side of the road. And he said, no, it was just it's just a statue, you know, like mm. a wooden statue or right, know, right. some statue. So I said, no, it was actually a stag. So I said, turn, turn the car around. And, you know, so he turned he turned the car around and, and it was an actual huge stag stood on the side of the road so i, I had my my um my phone with me so um <clears throat> so i took a little um i just took a little video and um, he said get your camera you know you, my camera was in the back he said yeah. get your camera and take a picture and i said no i said you know we've seen this one stag there'll be hundreds of stags <laughs> so i didn't get my camera and um and the whole time we were there i was searching for a stag yeah and there was none we didn't see there was not one <laughs> there was <laughs> of not course. one stag of so course the moral of the story is always have your camera ready yeah it's the photographs that you see when you're not ready to shoot that's yeah uh... yeah yeah but i've got i've got the memory of this stag in my head and it was it was incredible. I mean, it was huge. And then the, you know, the mountains were in the background and it was misty and it was just, it would have been the, it probably would have been the best photo I have ever taken. Oh my and God, Fiona, you now, now you're, now you're just, 
now you're just <laughs> romanticizing this moment because you didn't have your no, camera. Come on, really, girl. really, no, it was, it was. If you'd been there, you you would have, you would have, you would have realized. But um, I know but no. that. Um, I know that as photographers and as creators, we're always there's some sort of like what if or if I only had and like I've no. I've had those yeah. times where also where I did have my camera and I was there and it was amazing and the photograph doesn't justify the moment or yeah. you're so in the photograph miss the moment there's so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just it's I mean I I think with um well with all my pictures it's absolute look it's just it's look all the time it's 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 nothing to do with my me be you know if i'm skilled or not i don't I think that. it's the fact no, i really believe it's the fact that i take some so so many pictures I, I i do put the absolute effort in in all weather conditions and i just take so many pictures and it's it's just out of out of a hundred pictures. It's that lucky one where it's not luck though. If you do it, if you're right doing time. the work though, and you're showing up and you're there with your gear and you're seeing and you're like, there's nothing about that that's luck. Luck is I'm walking down the street and I look down and there's a bag of money at my feet. That's luck. But hiking going there with your gear, bringing your gear, being wet, being cold, composing, finding a place to hacky sack your camera so it doesn't roll down the hill, like all of these things that you do in order to create and then shooting hundreds and hundreds of frames for a single image, that's, that's the kind of obsession that you need in order to get the kind of photography that you create. And I, I'm telling you, Fiona, there's nothing about luck in that scenario. And I promise you, I could drop you anywhere. I could put you in a rainforest of Bolivia, or I could put you in Central America, or I could put you in the mountains of Canada. If it was a place that um, it was new for you, that you've never been, that resonated with you, you would see photographs and you'd make photographs like you make them, right? Like it's just... Um, I think yeah. that you try to deflect away your talent into, oh, but no, it's just the Lake District, the Lake District. It's so beautiful. It's just so, and I'm trying to say, and I said this the last time we spoke, mm. you, it's your perspective. It's your yeah. take. Yeah. It's your eyes. It's your yeah. framing. It's your yeah. vision. And, mm -hmm. um, you have a very unique perspective and you're so humble and you want to take no credit. I'm just trying to give you some of it, you know? Thank you. Honestly. I think, I think it's, I think it's really interesting. Um, like, um, I, I kind of, I, I go to play like, you know, we went to the highlands and, um, you know, going to Iceland and, um, just, um, and like even just going to um, a new place in the Lake District, Horswater, where I never shoot, it's it's interesting because, um, you know, I'll go to a place, and I, I kind of I'll, I'll I'll I take pictures, but they're just like postcard pictures, you know, and it's not until I really really know a place and get to know a place when I start to take better pictures. So I've, I've really, I mean, I've got, I've, I've got to visit a place. What I'm trying to say is I've got to visit a place lots and lots of times before I can start taking um, what I think are, you know, half decent pictures. Whereas if I just, if I just visit a place one time, you know, I'll just um, take pictures and, and it, they, they're just like, well, they're just like, normal postcard pictures yeah. but um but so it's really getting to know a place and just you know diving a little bit deeper into that place and 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 feeling at home in a place mm. um you know i mean i i'm um i can i can be on a on a fell 
on my own with my camera and then if I see somebody else you know on another fell I might have said this I think I, we, I, we talked about this in the last interview now if I see somebody else on another fell it completely puts me off and um, you know I think oh my god you know too many tourists around. right right I gotta go it. somewhere else right and just and yeah and so yeah I think um I so yeah I've I've got to really visit a place a lot lots and lots of times before I can start taking any decent pictures I think can we talk a little bit about your thoughts on the future of photography I'm sure you've seen a lot of AI generated profile pictures Instagram posts and stuff like that have you have you thought a little bit about the future of photography? I know as far as your approach to photography, you you know it works for you. You do what works for you and are very happy with it. You don't really pay attention too much what other people are doing and I really respect that about you. I'm just wondering what are your thoughts on the future of photography? I really believe that photography is not going anywhere. There's been all these different times before, like when digital photography came, it was the end of photography. When the iPhone had a camera in it, it's the end of photography. Now everybody had a camera. What are your thoughts now with AI, with um, the tools that people are using to try to eliminate the need for people like this? Does that worry you at all? Um, I don't think it, it doesn't worry me. I think, um, you know, I think I'll, well, I'll always be just um, plodding up the fells with my camera and, um, and it, it doesn't, it doesn't worry me. And I don't, I don't really think about it. And, um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not into, you know, gear and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's just, um, it, it's it's something that I don't really think about at all, you know, much. And I think, um, I think, you know, whatever happens, um, you know, I think photographer people are always going to take take pictures and photography. And I think it's, um, I think it's a lovely community. And I think Instagram's a lovely community. And um, so yeah, I, it's something that I just don't really think about at all. Amazing. And I'm glad that that's your answer because I think too many people are wrapped up in like what's happening left, right. It's like, listen, it doesn't affect me. Creativity is always going to be, it's always going to be, um, a necessary, a necessary skill, um, in the world. And the people who aren't creative are always going to be looking for tools to have a machine do things for them. But it can't replace us. So I'm glad you have that same sort of take. Um, what advice would you give a new photographer that was trying to get better at photography today? What advice would you give them? I have lots of younger emerging photographers that watch. There's many female photographers that watch me. So as a female photographer that would be starting today i think i think i would just say just take as many photos as you can possibly take just just keep 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 taking it and i think um i think it's it's i think it's important to look around at other people's work and get inspiration and and um you know and i think eventually you know after you've been doing it for 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 a long time, you you will find your niche, you know whatever whatever that is. I mean, I've I've done, um, I've done all kinds of photography. I've done um, sports photography. I've done wedding photography. I've done. I mean, I, I I go for walks every day with my with my lads, and um, you know I'm I'm kind of taking pictures of leaves and you know and just um just just do all photography and um and just just see what 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 you like you know it's um yeah yeah so i think my advice would be just um 
just go out and whether you've just got a, a phone or, a, you know, if you've got a camera, just take as many photos as you possibly can and just, um, yeah, yeah. Who do you look at for inspiration? Are there other photographers that have inspired you? Are there female photographers that have inspired you along your way? Or do you not look at many other photographers, which is also, I know many creatives need to have tunnel vision in order to stay the course for themselves, you know? When I think back to when, um, when I started posting photos on Flickr, um, the, it was kind of a group of, 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 of a, a, it was a great community on there. And it was um, kind of Ray Zandfort, Guy Levon, um, Aunt McLean. Um, there, there, it, was, it was mainly men who were posting kind of self-portraits of themselves. And um, so I think kind of back then, that kind of inspired me to try it as well. And, I'm, and now um, on Instagram, I, I look, you know, when I post a photo, you know, people comment and I'll go to every single, every single person that comments on my last picture because, I mean, it's so nice of them to comment. So I always go back and look at their work and, I, I get inspiration from everywhere and everybody, you know, it's just, um, there are so many brilliant photographers out there. And um, yeah, so just, um, yeah. Amazing. I love the fact that you take the time to go and look at people who look and comment on your work and like your pictures, you go into their Instagram and look at their pictures. And yeah. that's really how Instagram I, I, started. I, I think I, I, I'm, I think I've always done that. And I, I even, you know, like, I don't know how long ago Flickr was, but um, I've, you know, if people take the time to look at my work, you know, I'm going to go and have a look at theirs and see what they're doing. And, you know, it might not be my kind of thing, but you, 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 you're always going to find a nice picture. And, you know, it's, um, it's nice to, to just encourage people as well you know it's 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 nice to encourage people i love it and again fiona i i see you um with an apprentice i see you with an assistant i see you teaching um as well as you get um further along your journey but i know you're so much of a solo artist and um never want to put anybody out even if you were teaching somebody i'm sure you'd be like yeah but you don't want to yeah. go where i go <laughs> you don't want to do what i do no. I, would, I would i mean you know it was like um well that's why um you know i i i, I was put started putting me in the picture because i wanted the human element mm. and um you know i never i would never want to drag anybody up the fells and um and you know i wouldn't tell somebody i couldn't i couldn't tell somebody right tea coat off you know and start taking pictures i just couldn't do that it's um so yeah so i just do it myself if you had a chance to do your entire professional photography career your artistic career again is there anything that you'd do differently I don't know. I don't think so. I think um, I've I've really really enjoyed the photography um, journey that I've been on, and um, I don't think I I would do it. I I I can't think of how I would do it differently, and um, I mean, and I I I, I don't know how. To shoot differently either so um yeah it's just um so if, if anybody asks me how how do i do it like that or anything i don't i i mean i'm lucky because of the surroundings and everything and and the rubbish weather and um and i i i don't know how it turns out the same all the time but it does well this is this is called style and um, you have an unmistakable <laughs> style, Miss Lark. And I 
I also, I look at your work. I just shake my head. I'm just like, I, I've been shooting for 30 years. I don't have, I have no idea how she does this and how like I have thoughts maybe on, but you're, you just have such a unique approach to making photos. It's so different. And again, I, it's why I get so excited about when I see new photography from you, I'm just excited. And you have uh, a style that, that just speaks so well. Um, it, it speaks, the photographs speak so well to each other as a, as a collective, I can look at a single image and say Fiona Lark. I can look at a body of work and say Fiona Lark like that a photographer, you understand Fiona photographers work their whole career to be able to have that kind of recognition to their style and you have it so instantly and no one else shoots like you. Nobody makes photographs like you. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, that's, that's something that even, even if your uniqueness hasn't caught up to you understanding how absolutely incredibly unique your photography is, it's okay. And it just makes you humble and, um, I don't know. I, I, I just, I'm very inspired by your approach to photography. And in 2023, how a person who is relatively the same age as me, who's been um, shooting for less time as me, has, has been able to make something that drops such a mark, I feel like, on the photography world. It's it's really, it's beautiful. It's it's colorless. You're not, you don't use what I call crutches. Crutches are like, hey, it's a bad picture, make it color. Hey, it's a bad picture, just like throw a LUT on it or throw a, a color correction. Like you, it's composition, it's tone, it's mood, and it hits. And it moves me when I look at your photography. So having that kind of power, like that's, and I'm, I'm loving the fact that you're so humble and um, I really want to see your photographs on a wall. I really want to see your photographs on a book. And I really want more and more people to know about Fiona Lark. And this is why I've spoke to you and interviewed you and reviewed websites and i continually say your name it's just you're such an inspiration for my audience you're such an inspiration for me and um you're so funny <laughs> it's like also I just like i have the best time talking to you so i always want to shine a little bit of light on fiona yeah i think um <clears throat> well i i think i i just I don't take myself too seriously, you know, I think, um, <laughs> I don't know, it's, um, my pictures do look quite serious, though, don't they, really? <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> you, it seems yeah. like it's they're powerful, right? They're powerful, and people knew how, how much you smiled and how much you laughed and all of this, and again, more reason for me to try to pull you onto a camera onto some light and why i wanted to interview you again i felt like the audio was a little odd last time so i wanted to make sure that your messages and the wisdom that you were sharing with my audience were really heard and also i feel like you know six seven eight months time for more Fiona. So I just want to make sure that I also, and I'll have a nice little playlist of all my interviews that I've had with Fiona over, over the years eventually. So I'm excited about that. Do you think photography heals? Do you believe photography heals the viewer, the creator? I think it's, um, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, um, I think it's a very good distraction. I think um, maybe it does. And you know, I think um, I never, I, I mean, I've never even thought about it before. You know, it was just, um, I, I, you know, going up the fells with my camera, it was just something that I did. And until, you know, people started asking the questions and, and I know it, it hadn't even occurred to me before that photography was really helping me 
Um, so I think I think until people started asking the questions, and um, I, I just I just hadn't thought about it. It just hadn't occurred to me. It was just something that I love to do, and um, and then I think when you when you go through life and then you look back and you think, well, you know, maybe maybe it really did, <laughs> you know, it mm. really did help. And um, and I think it's not till you get through bad times and you look back and you think about what was it that got me through it or what helped. And um, it's, you know, to say about healing, I think um, it is all part of the process and I think it definitely helps a lot. Um, yeah. That's beautiful. What about some advice? What was some of the best advice that you were given? when you first started making photographs? I think somebody said something about don't do any interviews with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> On top of anything else, just make sure. <laughs> yeah, some Canadian bloke. Just oh don't do my any word. interviews with him. Um, oh my word. Yeah. Do you know, my, my, my father-in-law, was an absolutely brilliant photographer and uh, he actually inspired me a lot he gave me his um his Hasselblad um before he died and all this huge amount of equipment you know that I had no idea what to do with and um but we used to go for photography walks and um he would notice the tiny details that I would miss and he would point them out to me and um and i think it's just it's it's just noticing the tiny detail the tiny tiny details noticing clouds the light dark you know what just just note just noticing things around you just um just taking a deep breath just pausing in this busy busy life that we all lead and just um just noticing I think um, I think that that was good advice that he gave me. Um, pay attention. And just see it. Yeah, just pay attention and just 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 watching him and what he would be taking pictures of. And um, and yeah, so I think um, that was the best advice. And I think he 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 well, he inspired me a lot. Um, yeah. Nuances, I yeah. think, a really good word when it comes to yeah. your photography. So um, yeah. it's 2023, we're at the beginning of the year. Do you have goals that you'd like to see happen for yourself with your photography in 2023? Yeah, think, Are you at the point where you can tell us what you're hoping to put out there? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I think this year I, I, I really want to um, be traveling a bit more. Um, mm -hmm and um definitely going to new places um finding some new wild horses and um and i think just kind of um just grabbing every opportunity i mean i i, I get quite a lot of messages from people asking to interview me and you know i'll 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 say oh you know i'm a little bit busy like you know i said to you mm -hmm. i'm a little bit busy mm -hmm. <laughs> and um you know, so you kind of pestered me a bit, didn't you? <laughs> I, I it was only eleven months. It was only eleven months yeah. that I tried to get you on my so, show. Yeah, I. So this year, I want to definitely try and take more pictures, um, and um, and just grab any opportunities that come along. Really, I think. Amazing. Well, I I hope that I'm helping in the smallest way pull you out of your shell, be on camera more, because you understand it's very yeah, difficult to say no to me. I'm, I don't know if you've noticed, it's very difficult <laughs> to say no. You're very, you're very persistent, you're and, very persistent. And, <laughs> um, and also it's just, and once you're here, once you were on the live show, once you've now done the interviews, you see it's not, it's nothing to be afraid of. It's I'm greeting you with hugs. It's you actually, yeah get a chance to be yourself and 
I think I like I really pride myself on that when it comes to my approach to even doing this show is we're all people. There's people behind the creativity. Some of us are quirky and we have isms and you know, and I just wanna just say that it's okay, you know, for younger, newer creatives to to be in their oddities, to be in their shyness and and like really that's where creativity lives i feel and the type of personality that you are fiona and it doesn't matter how shy you are still you are the source of such inspiration and such creativity it's almost like part of you doing the work is even if you don't like it you have to show up to allow people to ask you questions <laughs> because you're paying it forward with what you know and with even if you're not talking technical or this is what I do on my iPad or this is the settings that I use on my, like, you know, we rarely talk about cameras or technology. We're talking about life and, and passion and heart and creativity and where ethereal things, like, I mean, a camera is just a tool like a paintbrush so i wouldn't be interested in talking to picasso about his paintbrush <laughs> you know what i mean so for you i'm more interested in talking to you about where the the ethos of where your ideas and your photographs come from and the fact that rarely do you even talk about that this kind of stuff it just happens right so it's almost like a good exercise for us to go yeah. through the thought process of an idea. That's what I'm trying to curb my show into and talking to creatives like you, Fiona, talking to people who even aren't used to being on camera. Those are people I want to talk to because it's real. It creates genuine content. I don't, it doesn't have to be all shiny and perfectly polished like a diamond because life rarely is. Yeah. Every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Sunday, yeah. no matter what. Yeah for two years i'm there and that kind of yeah. like showing up for people even if there's no one there showing up for me i still show up for people and that's um yeah that's now starting to really pay off so yeah yeah you know and it's it i think it, it i think um it is gonna be i think you're gonna be huge on youtube i think um because of all those reasons Oh, thank you, Fiona. I think, I think you're going to be absolutely huge, and I think, um, I think the world is your oyster because because of all the things that you've just said, and it and it it is just um, it's so apparent, and you know you can, you and and new people are coming to watch your videos, and I hope, you know, it helps a little bit, you know, like if I put a story on or something like that. Oh yeah, it if, helps. Even if you it just does. get. Even if you just get another couple of views, you know that 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 is good. It helps me a lot. Because Fiona. people need to see people. People need to see you. You know, it's um, you're you're different from anybody, and you're doing something different to what anybody else is doing. You know, and like I said, I mean, I've said no. Well, I haven't said no to people because I don't say no. I, I've just said, you know, I I'm haven't too busy. got time at the yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah, you just defer. To all these people, <laughs> all these people that are trying to interview me and I've said I haven't got time at the moment, but I've said, you know, I, I, I've i gone and I've been interviewed by you and because I completely trust you and I love what you do um, and I've got to really trust the person, whereas... <laughs> you know these all these other people you know I know they're going to be kind and sympathetic and they're going to be gentle with me and everything but um but I, I and I and I know that I have got to start saying yes to absolutely everything <laughs> but um but for now it's just nice and I've enjoyed the interviews with you and I enjoyed the interview with Sean. And for now, that's that's enough for me. <laughs> mm. Well, again, you yeah. shouldn't feel like you have to put yourself out there because it's not always going to be the right fit. It's not always going to be the right person that's asking, mm. you know, but um, yeah. 
I do know if a student asked you if they could talk to you for a school project, you would of course, like, I know the scenarios where you would be like, of course, yes, of course, call me, you know, even because you know, yeah. a student and how, yeah. how, how nervous they would be even to just send an email to you. Like that's you were, I'm sure yeah. like, I mean, when we were young, there was no email. <laughs> emailing people but it's like the fact that these kids can just reach out they can email they can find your phone number they can call you they can like dm you and send like yeah i think we, we yeah i know it's just so it's so um easy isn't it i mean we we had to send letters <laughs> yeah we'd write a formal like to whom it may concern to someone and put a stamp and like lick the envelope yeah. and wait patiently no, no, for a wait. reply you know my word you're exactly. and you're sincerely with having three boys as well you know i i know i i, I know all these abbreviations mm. and things like that and yeah I understand. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I am I'm. mean, I'm close. I try to stay young, but I have, I have a, a daughter and a son. They're 15 and 14. So it's, um, yeah. so you're well, the short ones. My sons are over six foot. So I, I'm only, I think I'm about five foot four. Okay. So I look like a little hobbit <laughs> next to them all. <laughs> you, you make big boys. That's lovely. Well, I, I, I hope, you know, it, I, I did all right and I oh, hope come on. I didn't answer the questions the light isn't actually I know I know I know I know I know I know I noticed you like thought, even I between thought, from when we on. when we agreed you're like I'm like great this and then to when we came back you even did a little light change <laughs> in between there I'm I like, hoped okay. I just hoped you wouldn't notice oh come I on Fiona I have that that's the one thing you can't hide from me is like that kind of changes I'm like oh, okay so now the lights here a little bit lower I'm so, I'm and blah 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 sorry. it's all good don't worry it's all fun I'm just thinking maybe you could maybe you could <laughs> turn it black and white oh and come put on some nice filter over it you can get these special filters that you where you can't see the wrinkles as well, like a, a little texture a little smoothing filter come on no <laughs> yeah I think that would <laughs> I'm sure, sh I'm absolutely 100% sure that Sean put one of those on. Amazing. Well, thank you, Fiona. Um, next time you interview me. Well, thank you. You're not going to watch it, but I'll send you a link to this before it goes live. You're too shy to watch your own premiere. I know you might um, hide, but even leaving a couple of comments or whatever um, on people who watch the video after the fact means everything to them, honestly. It really Do, does. Will I get like a red? Will I get a red carpet? <laughs> you absolutely will. At the premiere. You absolutely will get a red carpet. <laughs> if you decide to wear a dress or want to have a camera on you, we can arrange for you to call in, and I can feed you into my live stream if you want. I can have you a little picture. Dress. Oh my word! Oh my word! Push dress, red carpet, the lot. I love it. My friends don't even know that I take pictures. You know. Um, my work colleagues, they have got no idea that I take pictures. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because because I have been um, out walking a few times, you know, with friends or whatever. And I've had people actually saying to me, are you Fiona Lark? And it, it has completely floored me when somebody stopped me and said that. Because I'm thinking, I mean, for me, I, I you know, on the black and white photos, you know, I don't, you can't tell, I, I don't yeah. think you can tell that it's you me. You can know. Because, you, you know, can. Most, of the time, most of the time I've got my back to the Yeah, camera. yeah, but you can and, know, um, you can, you can, because I, I mean, it, I can. It, is it like kind of with, um, you know, like with me, with my photography, as soon as I take my pictures, as soon as I get home, I've got to, I've got to have a look. I, is it the same with your editing, editing? is, are you quite it, quick? It, it's, I mean, I'm you... quick, but I have to step away. Like that's the, that's the, and, and as well with stills, I'm, when I'm in it, I'm like, I have to see it on the back of the camera, see it on the back of the camera, see it, but it's like, then I can leave my camera with the card in it sitting there and like, no. be cool. No. Oh yeah. Be just. No. And then <laughs> I take the card from my camera. I put it on my desk. I put it right here. 
And then the next day, if it, like, then I'll import the next day and I see the pictures like I didn't make them. I see the pictures like it's a whole other person who made them. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so Like, I, I literally, yeah. after the act, I, I, it's yeah. done. I, I step, it's like, yeah, but it's on that car and you need to, it's like, no, 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 no. I save that feeling for another day. I don't need that feeling on top of the feeling that I just had of yeah. getting it because yeah. I felt that already. Now the next thing yeah. is the next day when it's almost like left my body a little bit where I'm not, yeah. and I sit yeah. down and I'm like, oh yeah, shit, right, that card, that was, and then I put, and then it's like, pop, bang, bang, bang. And I'm just like, oh. now <laughs> I have a whole new enthusiasm to look through 500 photos because I don't have that after making them. Yeah, and no, I mean, I, I I do it as soon as I get back. Just I just cannot wait. I just can't wait, and I'll do it as soon as I get back. But then I leave them, and then I go back, and what I thought was maybe good isn't good. What I thought was maybe rubbish is like, amazing. So it is like seeing it with it's with seeing it with fresh eyes again. Yeah. So just yeah. having that break. So although I do I do put them all on the iPad soon as I get back and I edit every single picture. So, um, you know, it might look rubbish in colour, but then when I turn it to black and white, um, it's just got that something. And um, so every single picture I edit to black and white and then um, and then I'll leave them and I'll come back. And but then I, I sometimes I can come back after like two or three years and I and I, and I'm looking at them with completely fresh eyes and I'm thinking you know why didn't why didn't I post that I think there was there was one um that I took maybe three years ago ago of one of the horses and me and um and for me it was it's probably one of the best pictures I've taken of the horses mm. and I and and I, I and looking at it with fresh eyes and it I just thought why didn't I notice that three years ago I'm kind of no, I'm just noticing new things, you know, so it's, it's just, um, it's beautiful yeah. though. It's beautiful. And again, it's, there's art knows no time. It really, it, and it's, it's not on your time or on my time. It's on, it, it just is when it, when it wants to be discovered. And the fact yeah. that you shot yeah. that photograph, you captured that photograph, but then you shelved it and then you saw it later and it had so much more meaning for you yeah. later. That's just when it was supposed yeah. to happen, yeah. when you were supposed to release it, when it was supposed to be discovered. Yeah. Like everything yeah. really is how it has, yeah, where it absolutely. really is how it's supposed yeah. to be. Um, I think when we try to yeah. change that, when, it, when we try to change that negotiation, when things happen, when they're supposed to happen, when you try to change that in any way, that's when, yeah, you can't you can't change things that you can't change fate. You can't change art. It just is what it is. You know, it's kind of beautiful. Thank you <laughs> for taking your evening with me. I didn't think I'd have you for this long, but I'm very happy that you gave me this long. Well, thank you so much. I hope thank your you voice is me. okay. And I'm so so sorry about my cough. Don't worry. Don't worry. I just want it to be better. That's I want you to be better. I want you to um, feel good about this conversation and know it's valuable. Your authenticity is valuable, Fiona. I don't want you to ever forget how um, your uniqueness and authenticity is is so special. And um, yeah, I, I don't think I need to tell you not to change. I don't think you're. I don't think you're trying to be. Um, Do you know? Yeah, I just don't know how to change. Sometimes I think, oh, I, I wish I could do things a little bit different, but it always comes back to the same. <laughs> and, you know, I think, I wonder if people will get bored of that, but I think I've got to do it how I, how I want to do it, you know, the best way that I can do it. And if people like that, well, that's absolutely amazing. And um, so I've just got to keep, keep doing it, haven't I, really? You really do. You really do. There's not much of a choice. We just have to show up and do the work. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Lark. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I appreciate you. And um, I will wait to see some photos from you tomorrow.
I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised by the comments and the feedback that you get from this interview. <laughs> Thank you, Fiona. I appreciate you. And um, Thank you so I'll much. email Thank and you. talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Have a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, good night. Bye bye. What an interview. She makes me so happy. I don't know what else to say other than Fiona Lark makes me happy. She's such a talented photographer. She's so humble. And believe you me, you will be hearing more about Fiona Lark in the coming weeks, months, and years. Fiona is about to be a household name. And if you've learned about Fiona Lark here first, for the first time, please drop a comment. If this video has inspired you, please consider subscribing. Know that you making it to the end of this video means so much to me. Your watch time is how I'll make it to YouTube Partner and start to be able to monetize this whole thing with commercials that you can skip, which is amazing. So if you want me to be looking at your photographs, if you want me to be helping you get to the next level, you have to join the Discord. The Discord link is in the video that you're watching. And I also do this type of long form content because I got to tell you, long form content's the new meta. Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern time, you will find me here available with you on the other end of the interwebs directly talking to me asking me questions and i'll be helping you get to that next level with your photography so if you want to be notified when i upload content like all the youtubers say click the bell notification to be notified hit the subscribe button so you see all that new content and come back again that's all i ask from you come back again see me again soon and um thank you so very much for watching we'll see you on the next one